So I want to go over some of your questions you guys asked me a little bit earlier this week. I asked on my channel for you guys to drop some, some Packers questions. And I'm going to try to get through most of these. And so I'm not going to go into incredible depth on every single one because there are a ton of comments here. But I want to get into these questions that you guys had regarding the Packers. And this is from NFL World Loop 531. What do you think we'll do in the draft? So I was thinking about this. I think the Packers' two biggest need are safety and cornerback. Um, I do question when it comes to safety if there will be one drafted in round one because some draft experts, former scouts like Daniel Jeremiah, didn't have any safety in his top 50 prospects. And so I, even though the Packers need a safety, I'm not sure they'll use it in round one. And what I'm really landing on is I think the Packers will probably draft a cornerback in round one. They've done it you know, a few times in years past. A lot of times they don't draft offensive linemen in round one. Um, hasn't happened since 2011. So unless they, you know, sort of stray away from what they typically do, I would guess they draft linemen after round one. But I think corner is a need. I think that it's a premier position in the NFL. And the Packers have a need there with both, you know, Rasul Douglas being traded away last season with Keyshawn Nixon also becoming a free agent. I think cornerback makes the most sense. And... The one that I would like to see is Cooper DeJean, who can also play safety, which is nice, that versatility. I just wonder, because I feel like when I look at mock drafts, he's the most mocked player that I've really seen to the Packers, happened a lot of times. And I just feel like typically, you know, the guy that you think, oh, the Packers are going to draft this guy, they draft someone else. And so that's why I'm like, I don't know if it's Cooper DeJean, probably some other cornerback sitting around there. But that's sort of my general um, thought process there. But I'll say DeJean, because I, I would like that. Now moving on, another draft question, Venom slash 108. Are we going to trade up in the draft? If so, who are we getting? It's a possibility. Um, you know, Gutekinds has, has done it in the past, traded up for Jordan Love. He's traded a lot of different times in, the, in round one over the years. And honestly, I have, no, I have no clue. The Packers are at 25, and it's really just the simple realities. Like if they like someone who, let's say, is at pick number 13, 14, they think he's worth trading a second round pick, a third round pick, whatever it is with their first round pick to get him. They'll do it. I honestly have no idea what the Packers are thinking. So it's a possibility, but we'll just have to wait and see. Then we have here from Drex, 8599. Should Packers go after a veteran QB to back up Jordan Love? No, they shouldn't, in my opinion. They already have Sean Clifford. I think they like him a lot. And he's had a year with the Packers. And so I think you stick with, stick with Clifford I don't think there's any need to bring in a veteran backup QB behind Jordan Love. Then here we have 2011 John Doe. Should the Packers pursue Chris Jones to form a dominant front seven? While Chris Jones and the Packers would be very exciting to watch, no doubt, when you get one of the best defensive linemen in the league, it would help your team. But I don't think they should. I think that they should pursue spinning up at safety and cornerback potentially. I sort of like their defensive line. I think that they're going to add to the D-line, but I don't think they're going to spend on... Chris Jones. Um, that's just my guess. Even though having him on this defense will be will be wild. Don't think it's going to happen. Here we have Knifey McKnife. Do you think Packers should be looking into drafting linebackers? And what do you think of Jeff Halfley and the defensive staff he has constructed? Definitely. There is definitely a need at um, you know, linebacker, middle linebacker going to a 4-3. Devondra Campbell may or may not be back. And then you got McDuffie and... Quay Walker, there's definitely a need to add some more linebackers there. I would assume they they bolster that unit in the draft, maybe in free agency. And from all that I've seen from the defensive coaches, Halfley is brought in here. I like their energy. It seems like they brought in coaches who have a ton of just intensity and and you know love love of the game and a desire to get that energy to their players. And from all that I've seen, I like the coaches. Here we have Hector G two four eight one two. What should be our realistic expectations on our defense? Well, I think that the hope is, of course, with Halfley coming in, that we're better than we were with Barry. We saw some nice things from a defense later in the season. Do wonder if that's partially due to Matt LaFleur getting more involved, making it simpler, potentially. But, you, I mean, you'd love to see some kind of jump here. You know, you bring in a new defensive coordinator. You don't want to see them decline, that's for sure. You don't want to see them stay the same. The Packers made the switch because they knew the Packers' defense needs to get better. And from all that I've heard about Halfley, all that I've shared in this channel... The, the way that he coaches, the way that his former players have talked about his ability to explain things in a simple way, to allow his guys to play fast and free. Preston Smith said at the end of the year that they were starting to do that more, you know, playing more free. And if that can happen, I think the Packers could be a top 10 defense. But at the same time, I'm hesitant because I feel like I've said that in the years past that 
you know, I'm always hopeful, but we just have to wait and see when Halfley really comes in here and, and what he does. But the Packers have a lot of talent, no doubt about that. They should be able to add some more this offseason, and I expect them to get better. And I think Halfley, he seems like a solid fit for this Packer, for this Packers defense. Then here from Nathaniel Julian 3860. Should the Packers have a backup plan for Christian Watson, who seems to have hamstring problems? So I did see the Packers said that they're going to do their best to, you know, help Watson and figure out why he has so many of those hamstring issues. Luckily, the Packers wide receiver room is absolutely loaded. So even though Watson was dealing with injuries this season, guys like Wicks, Jaden Reed, Romeo Dobbs, uh, Bo Melton, you know, tons of these guys are really legit wide receivers. And that's the beauty of it. When some of them last season were dealing with injuries, the other guys step up. So I don't think the Packers, even with Watson's hamstring injuries, which hopefully will be in the past, I think they're set at receiver, but I wouldn't be shocked if they maybe draft one this year. Because eventually, you know, all these guys are going to be due for contracts and you're going to need to have some younger, cheap talent there, even with all the talent there. Then we have for my friend Studda. Not really a question, but man, I think Wicks has the highest upside out of any receiver we have. Dude just screams superstar to me. I 100% agree. And I've seen clips where they're putting um, Wicks next to Devontae Adams, some of his like releases and routes, and he looks very similar. And it looks like the Packers found an absolute steal in Wicks in the fifth round last season. And I agree. I think we're just starting to see what Wicks can be. And if the Packers didn't have so much talent, I think that, you know, Wicks could really take over as a number one receiver. But the Packers, you know, have Watson, who can be legit number one. Dobbs at times, Reed. It's nice that the Packers have so much different talent. Then here we have It's Me, Rob, 6120. What's your opinion on the Packers or RB situation? Seems like A.J. Dillon will probably be gone unless he comes back on a really cheap deal. Aaron Jones, probably back. Um, I assume they work his contract out a little to lower his cap hit at $17 million. With Aaron Jones getting up there in age, you do need to, I think, make a, a plan for the future. Maybe draft a running back in rounds two to four. Maybe add a couple in, in the draft. I do like Emmanuel Wilson. He, I think he has some nice aspects to his game very fast. Average six yards a carry last year in 14 attempts. So you may have something there, but also I think add someone in the draft, maybe rounds two to four um, to potentially be the future once Aaron, Aaron Jones is no longer here, whenever that could be. Um, but seems like next year, Jones should be here, and I assume the Packers will add depth. Strong Woods, will Packers keep Savage and or sign safety from Washington? Um, it doesn't seem like the Packers will keep Savage now with them allowing his dead cap hit to come on, uh, not giving him an extension before that dead cap hit arrived on the cap at like four point something million. Seems like Savage is probably gone. And the safety from Washington, I think you're talking about isn't that Cameron Curl? I do like the fact that Curl from Washington, 25 years old, or about to be 25 years old. Only thing that makes me slightly hesitant, no interceptions the past three years. The Packers want to take you know strides forward there, um, forcing more turnovers. So that's the only thing that maybe I'm hesitant about him, but he could be a solid option. Then here from Matthew Robinus2882, is there any update on Jones? I think you mean Aaron Jones. Do we have any other um, plan to restructure our contract extension with with him, um, haven't seen any other updates on Aaron Jones besides the fact that they were talking. And my guess is he takes some kind of pay cut. He has a $17 million cap hit. He is getting up there in age. He missed a ton of games last year with injury. He played really, really well. So I think that when healthy, still playing at a top tier level. My only question is injuries. And I think the Packers want to get his cap hit down. I My guess is he'll take a pay cut. That's my guess. Uh, that's all I have for this one. If you want more Packers content, feel free to subscribe down below. And as I said, I'll link my other channel down below.